What is going on? I want to welcome you from Half Court for today, Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. I'm your host, Sean Murphy, alongside my guy, Jeff Mother. I afraid he, Jeff. Good to see you, my guy. Good to see you too, man. I mean, it's good to see you. And and you know, I gotta whip out the hair. Usually I'm wearing a hat, but it, you know, we're making some progress on the hair. Dude, you got um, the you got the new hair. I got the I got the new digs. Like, look at us, man. Dude, and I took your background, by the way. I just, yeah, I you did. It. Yeah, you bastard. It's, <laughs> And for some reason, by the way, I found this. I just like thought of this as we were recording. I wear this same shirt. I wear it once a week when we record. I know it looks like I never change my clothes, but this shirt <laughs> is specifically for this for from half court. So if you see this, you're like, what the hell? The dude's been wearing it the last three weeks. I promise it's clean. I wash my clothes. All right. Just to, just to put that out there. He's lying. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it smells right now. Oh my gosh, Jeff! It's good to see you, man. It's good to be here to talk. It's good here to talk about, uh, you know, Detroit sports, Detroit basketball, just everything going on in general, man. Because it's a good time, you know. Like I, I, I know it's one of those things where you know, last few games, Pistons are on a little bit of a losing streak. You know, it's never fun when your team is over thirty plus losses. But you know, I think over the next few weeks, I think we're gonna see some clarity about where we're going and where we're heading next. And Jeff, I kind of want to start with, you know, with this, I actually just came upon this article um, from the athletic staff asking, you know, which team in Detroit will be next because the Detroit lions have arrived, you know, so people are asking, is it going to be the Pistons? Is it going to be the Tigers? Is it going to be the wings? And our guy, James Edwards, the third said that he believes that Pistons are two a and red wings are two B. Now, Jeff, I would personally agree with that as well. I know Adam has said on the show that he thinks the Tigers are ahead of the Pistons currently. I think that's a little bit reactionary and is yeah. denying the, the the fact and the reality that the Tigers don't even have a single player that's deemed a good starting player in the MLB, let alone a franchise player. And the fact that the Pistons have a fran- have not one, but two potential franchise players. Three, if you throw in Jalen Duren. So, Jeff, my question to you, you know, I want to start with this. Do you still believe that the Pistons are the next team when it comes to, you know, the city of Detroit as far as taking that turn? Because, in my opinion, if, if, if you look at the Red Wings even, I, I, I would say for them, like, obviously, Stevie Y, we, we, you know, we trust a lot of things that he's done. I know there's been... You know, a little bit of, you know, I know most cider hasn't had, you know, the, the year or two that we are, we might be hoping for. But at the same time, for the Red Wings, there's not a Victor Wimbenyama type, you know, golden pot at the end of that rainbow. There's not a Scoot Henderson type, you know, golden pot at the end of that rainbow. They can make moves. They can be more aggressive and they can, you know, develop their talent in-house, which they have, which, you know, is really good. But I would argue for the Pistons, I would say that, of any team in the city of Detroit, other than the Lions, they have the most ammunition and the most momentum to push and actually do something aggressive and actually make a run towards something. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's accurate. I, I understand if people want to say, well, the Wings have Steve Eiserman. That's fair. But to your point in the NBA. Pistons cool. have Troy Weaver, dude. Well, I, I guess if you want to say championship pedigree as a, as a general manager, that's probably you give that slight edge. But to your point in the NBA, you get one superb player. You get one superstar. It could change your franchise. Like, look, well, at, we always – no, go on. Well, and not, well, not to be petty, but correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, that championship pedigree, didn't didn't they start winning those Stanley Cups after he left the Lightning? Wasn't he gone from the franchise once those championships oh, – he, he did began? build – he built that oh, team. But, 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 did he, but was he there? It, it's, okay, so technically he he was. It's his All team. Right. So, oh, it, oh, so, and, but regardless, he has <laughs> the pedigree. I, I get I get why people would want to give the wings. I'd probably lean the wings if you want to say two A two B. I'd probably say two A wings two B Pistons. But the the problem is, and this is why the Pistons to me are so intriguing, is if Cade and we've seen uh, flashes of Cade before he went down, and, and both teams are dealing with injuries. I think that kind of gets overlooked as well. The Red Wings dealing with a ton of injuries. Pistons have been dealing with an injury to their their best player, and along that you have guys that are banged up here and there. Duran's out right now. So, but for the Pistons, if one of these guys hit, uh, let's say you have Cade and Ivy, they both become all stars or, or you know better at their positions. 
then you have a dangerous team. Then this team takes it up to not even a playoff contender, but you have guys that can lead you into, into playoff runs. So that's kind of where it's different. It just depends on what the Pistons have, you know, in terms of talent. If these guys can can pop and become elite players, I mean, that's probably where the difference is. But the Red Wings, to me, they're they're not far they're not far away either. But Jeff, again, what I think you're missing in that argument, and I think the biggest component that you have to consider in this all is the draft lottery and what's coming at the end for the Pistons at the end of the season. Because no matter what happens, whether whether they whether they you know get a a number one overall pick or not, they're at the very least they're getting a top five pick in this year's draft, right? Statistically, right. It, it would be an anomaly if they didn't. And this is a generational draft. So to have a top five pick in that type of draft, coupled with the type of talent they already have in house, coupled with the amount of money that they have coming up. Like, I think the thing that I try to like keep reiterating is like, I know that like a lot of people are like feeling down about like where the team is at and like how they're performing on the defensive end. Now this team needs to get better and it does, but there's going to be an insane amount of ammunition and opportunity to do so not only in like two or three weeks, but also in two or three months. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, those guys can play right away. Like that's kind of the difference too, with the NBA and the NHL, like guys that's yeah. Heisman takes, they're going to have to be developed, right? The Pistons, you draft a Duran who's 18 years old. He's a starter by, you know, two months go by He's 19. He's already starting making an impact. So the NBA to me, I mean, as much people look at the Pistons and say it's a disaster. That's why Adam brings up the Tigers, which I mean, let's not forget the Tigers also have Chris, Chris Illich, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, that is the owner who refuses to spend money, but no, no, no. We'll just look at the Pistons. Tom Gores, he stepped their back. Their biggest move this off season was the dimensions of their outfield, Jeff. Biggest move by far. But at least the piss you, you got a guy in Troy Weaver who's allowed to operate as he so chooses. I mean, Tom gives him all the flexibility, the freedom. So hey, with, with Troy at the helm, he's going to find talent. And, and this team's gonna keep stacking talent. So to me, the Pistons, they're the most intriguing because as long as these guys turn into the players we expect them to be, they're gonna be dangerous. Well, and and, and Jeff, the other thing too, all reports indicate that they're pretty confident with what they have in house, too. Yeah. Like from the sounds of it. They're really confident and, and really like having a guy like Alec Burks in the building, which, by the way, the more and more I watch Alec Burks play, the more and more I want him in a Pistons uniform next season. By you. the way, Sadiq Bey, a guy who everyone was wondering what was going on with him, a guy who seems to be getting better and better as the season goes on as well, a guy who had five, six threes the other game, a guy who scored 30-plus points in his, in, his, in, his, in, his, in his thriving in that sixth-man role. Like, I, I think, you know, like you, you look at, at everything that you have in house and Detroit is in a luxurious spot where people want the assets that they have. However, at the same time, they're in a luxurious spot to where they don't have to trade these pieces because they can realistically be good very soon. Mm hmm. And, and and it all really starts too, and and this is we talk about Dwayne Casey. There there's still an unf there's a lot of work that needs to be done still with with this roster and and who's your head coach of the future. So those things they got to figure out. Like for the Red Wings, for example, they already kind of have their head coach. They've already made that move, so they're right. a little farther along. But still, the Pistons to me, in terms of the talent they have, you hit it right on the head. I think they have the most intriguing young core. Lions are different. I mean, you have eleven guys on each side of the ball. There's a ton of there's a fifty three man roster. It's different, but with the Pistons, if we're talking Tigers, Red Wings, Pistons, the Pistons me you have the most you know talent on your roster and on top of that you have a league where it's easier for young guys to thrive right like if you have apollo look out look what he's done for orlando as a number one pick it's unreal so oh my god different league in that aspect oh yeah yeah exactly like like this is yeah <laughs> it, it is because in, in the nhl it's in, in in the nfl too it's a lot about building depth and, and having you know as complete of a roster as possible don't get me wrong obviously you need yeah. that in the nba too i'm not saying that that's not factor in the nba however all it takes is one game changing player all it takes is one guy added to your roster and that can completely change the entire dynamic we saw what adding evan mobley did to cleveland we saw having a healthy darius garland did to cleveland we we're seeing in reverse what having a injured Devin Booker is doing to a team like phoenix the suns went from being the master class of the west to being the master ass of the West because <laughs> Devin Booker's been out of the lineup. Like, like that, like that's the thing. So, like, for you know, whether it's a guy like Victor Wimbanyama or 
Scoot Henderson or one of the Thompson twins, it's any of these guys can come in and make an impact right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you see that. Especially Wimby. Yeah. Especially Wimby. Who's, I mean, you talk about this draft class, a lot to be excited about. If you get a guy like Victor or, or Scoot, whoever it is for your franchise, it, it changes the trajectory of your franchise. Like the NHL, you draft somebody, you will find players like a Jack Hughes who you draft, and they're they're fantastic players right away. But some other guys, you got to spend a year or two being developed. It, there's not much development in the NBA. Like we had, remember we had that conversation about Jalen Dern. Will he see time in the G League? Hell no. Now that you look back, you're like, yeah, he had all the talent in the world. If these players are talented. They're not going to spend any time down there. They'll be playing NBA basketball. Now it might take a little while because you have a young team, but when it pays off, it pays off. And when these guys start getting better and better. You're going to have a team that's ready to contend in, what, three to four years, you could say. Yeah. And that's yeah. not including free agency moves or trades. Like the Suns you mentioned, they got Chris Paul, changed everything. Like they yeah. had the same team already constructed, but they added pieces and became a, fil- a finals contender. Yeah, exactly, man. And and, and, that, and the thing is, is you you don't have to make these, these gigantic moves to, to get significantly better in this league. There are going to be guys available this offseason – you know, whether they're big names or not, like even guys like, like Grant Williams would, would be a massive yeah. addition that could come in and be a great wing defender, three-point shooter, someone that could stretch the floor and be versatile. Like, I think one of the big things is that, you know, when you are heading into these next stages, you are in a position to where you can evaluate what you have and start to, you know, shift the pieces and make those significant changes. And I think, you know, if there's any, I I, I would argue that, you know, uh, of the, you know, of the general managers in Detroit, I think it's pretty clear, like, you know, Brad Holmes and Troy Weaver, I'd say, you know, have a very strong, firm foundation in, you know, what their vision is, what they're trying to build, where they're trying to go. And obviously Stevie Y has that too. I'm not saying he doesn't. However, I, I would say, you know, with the Pistons and the Lions, like almost every draft pick, it seems has been a hit, you know, yeah. almost every trade and transaction has been a hit. And I would say like with the Red Wings, there's maybe been a little bit more cause for concern or or pauses or things that maybe, you know, a little bit of, of things that have, you know, ruttered in the road, so to speak. But again, you know, some of that's due to injury, too. So, you know, it's and again, I'm not a hockey guy, so I'm not going to come here and claim that I know everything about what's going on with the Red Wings. I think they're going to be massively successful. I just think at the same time, I think people are I, I think people are looking at the losing that, that is happening right now. The roster that's that's currently being fielded and the team that that is currently playing in the Pistons uniforms and thinking that's this team for the yeah. years to come. And it's not. It's just no. not. No, they're, they're letting the losing overshadow the more important things to me, which is like we always allude to, which is player development. Are these guys getting better? Because that's your future, right? As long as these guys are improving, future still looks bright. And I think the losing or the, the criticism of Dwayne, all that kind of get, gets mixed in, and they don't want to give Dwayne credit for the player development. It's more like, ah, it is what it is. If the guys get better, they get better, but this season stinks. That's not how I'm – looking at this season i'm seeing positive player development and that still gives me you know uh encouragement for the future it doesn't take right. anything away we said 30 wins with Cade, and they're on track to win what 23 24 games without them i mean right. are we really shocked like let's be honest now can they right. play better absolutely but at the end of the day we all knew this was a process we, we, right. we kind of all knew that right and you know it, it, and and uh, even james edwards brings up in, in this article and it's a good point if you think about it the rebuild didn't really start until Cade Cunningham came in the building because the first full year was to be able to get yourself into position to get that number one pick. And then if you really think about it, it was from there that they could build around Cade. Like if you think like, if you actually think about, okay, how long have we actually been in this rebuild for? I know it feels like it's been 12 or 13 years because that's how long it's been since the Pistons have been good. But at the same time, this process has really only been three years and for three years, this this process has yielded a metric ton of talent, like like a, like yeah. a massive amount of talent. There's the Pistons have drafted more quality young players in the past three years, I would argue, than the Pistons have in the last fifteen. Genuinely, and you probably win that argument. Yeah, genuinely, like that. That's how well they've done. Now give him, now give that guy cap space. Now let that guy choose the veterans he wants to come in. 
Now let that guy potentially choose what coach he wants down the line. Now let, like, Jeff, have you ever watched Game of Thrones? No, I've not. To me, I, 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 to me, like the watching Game of Thrones made me like, made me change my view of the NBA. They also used to do this like short series on like on Bleacher Report when Game of Thrones was a thing that was really funny. Um, and like the big thing with Game of Thrones is you know it's all about like like conquering and controlling and like trying to take over the throne and the politics of it all and the back you know the behind the door conversations and the manipulation and the things you know, the things that are happening. And what you find in that show is the reality is, is that a lot of people look at the throne and the, the pageantry and all that stuff that's going on right in front of you. And you focus on that. But the reality of it is, is that the real picture, everything like the real stuff that you want to be looking at is what's behind the scenes. What's in the, ch what's in the secret chambers, what's in the, you know, what's in the gardens that people are having secret walks down. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in, in the NBA world, like people look at what's happening on the court or what's happening in a season on a day-to-day -day basis and judging solely on your wins and loss record. And I understand because that's, you know, that's just, that's the bottom line. That's what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what you consume as a basketball fan. But the reality of it is Jeff, the, the, the power and the, and the, the overall control of this league doesn't, you know, doesn't start on the court. It starts in the front office. It starts in the ownership room. It starts in the executive room. And that stuff is like Game of Thrones, man, because you're manipulating your team. You're putting yourselves in positions to try and contend and succeed over long periods of time, over the long term. Like you even look like you, you, this, this Boston Celtics team that's really good right now, they specifically five years ago specifically tried to not contend as much back then because they knew LeBron was in the conference and they wanted to wait until LeBron was gone. How are they doing now? LeBron's out of the conference. They're dominating, right? Yeah. yeah. Like the, to me, like that's how you have to look at the look, look, look at this man. It's like, you, you, you got to play the long game. Troy Weaver's that game of Thrones type, like, you know, like manipulator in the background, putting all the pieces together. It's a long game, man. That's that's the yeah. way you have to look at it. One hundred percent. And the fact that Troy had the quote last year, where he he uh, flat out said, "Hey, when we get there, we want to stay there. We don't want to just be a, a one trip, you know, show up and then we're we're done. You, you know, it's about even if it takes two to three years to build a dynasty and build a team that can contend for multiple years, it's worth it. Like, look at some of the best dynasties in the in the NBA. Like, they weren't built." in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. These things took years. It took coaching changes. It took, you know, uh, getting different players, bring, trading away different players, like yeah. whether it's the Warriors, uh, Michael Jordan winning his first finals when he was almost 30 years old. Like things take longer, I think, in the NBA than people actually, you know, realize. Not the NFL. It just yeah, Jeff, when I was in middle school, the Golden State Warriors were a laughing stock franchise. Yeah. When, when Mark Jackson came out and called Steph Curry and Klay Thompson the two greatest shooters to ever play basketball, Everyone looked at him like he was crazy. Yeah. And now the Golden State Warriors are the most valuable franchise in the National Basketball Association, eating the Lakers and the Celtics. Like, that's the type of long that's the type of long term play that comes in that comes into play that comes into terms. And so I understand, you know, the frustrations. I understand where people are at, but it's not even that it's far away. Right. Like, that's the thing. So with that, what do you guys think of where the Pistons are at? Do, is there any players that you would like to see the Pistons add at the trade deadline or in free agency? Let us know in the comment section down below. But also be sure you give my boy Jeff a uh, uh, follow on Twitter to give him sympathy for that buzz cut at Jeff. Hi, Freddy. And also follow your boy at Sean Half Court. But folks, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you guys next time from AFCOR. Be sure you subscribe.